Hello, welcome to the video for what is tick interval. So to recap, a tick is basically usually every frame. It's when the engine is allowing you to do stuff. It's generally tied to your frame rate. So for example, a 60 frame per second game is going to get 60 ticks per second. However, actors can actually have intervals or the time when it ticks being independent. What do I mean by that? Well, by default, if we were to look at our box here, let's open up the blueprint and we look at our tick settings, you'll see it says tick interval seconds 0.0. .0. That means it's basically going to tick every frame it can. However, maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want something that will tick every second. It's um, It looks for the player and maybe update something. Or we have something that's not super important and we'll run it every tenth of a second. Rather than doing some fancy math and having it run on the tick and then check for a elapsed time, we can just actually change the time that this actor will tick. Keep in mind, this is only a best guess. Obviously, if your tick interval is a tenth of a second and you're actually running slower than a tenth of a second, it's not going to be able to tick at that time frame because the engine won't let it. So let's go and look at our example here. We'll hit play and we'll find this middle cube. I hit do something and well, nothing happens. That's not true. What we're actually doing is we are getting the interval and setting it right here and set to zero. Remember by default, it is zero and that means every frame. But if I want to change it to let's say 0.1 and hit do something, now you'll see our middle cube is rotating slower. We have our cube set every single time it ticks. If we were to choose the correct one, you're basically not going to see a difference here. Every time it ticks, it adds one, or subtracts one actually in this case because I'm going the other direction, to the world rotation and sets it. So we're basically spinning based on the tick. And this is an issue you can see if you rely on ticks to do things that are time-based. Rather than moving a set distance over a set, set time, we are basically, the faster your computer runs, the faster this thing is going to spin. In this case, because our tick is set to tenth of a second, we're only going to get ten increments every second, rather than these which are running at, I don't know, let's see. I'm running at 120 frames per second. So you're getting 120 intervals per second for these cubes and ten per second. And of course you can adjust it, so we could make it even faster. I can make it 0 0.01, hit do something, of course it's going to speed up. Now this is something to note. Let's say we set it to 5 and I do something. This is going to look like it stopped. It's not stopped, it's just taking 5 seconds between each time it does something. So it's going to look like it's moving really slowly. Now let's say I want it to go back to fast. We'll do point 0.1 and hit do something. You'll notice it didn't change. It took it a little while. The change for the interval is basically not going to happen immediately. It's only going to happen after the next tick and then it will start using the new one. Remember, it's basically wait five seconds. Let's do our tick. Okay, how much longer do we wait? Oh, it's five seconds. We'll wait five seconds and it'll continue. So if it's in the middle of waiting five seconds and you adjust it to a tenth of a second, it still needs to finish its current tick. So that is something to keep in mind. Looking at the nodes themselves, they're pretty simple. We have the set actor tick interval and the get actor tick in interval nodes. They both take in actors. And then if you're setting it, you simply set as a float what the interval is. Now, one thing I didn't mention, but hopefully was obvious, let's say we set this to something like uh, a 20th of a second and it's running slowly. If we want to set it back to normal or every frame, just set it to zero and it'll go back to firing every frame. There are two other nodes. If we look at the actor tick interval and we uncheck this, um, I apologize. I thought there would be ones in here for the components. Let me double check. Um, yeah, okay. I'm not crazy. They are in here. Oh, because I probably typed an actor tick instead of, yeah, yep. Yeah. So if I wasn't being silly here and I just typed an interval, what I meant to say, and um, I did say it technically, is there are two other ones. There's the get component tick interval and the set component tick interval. These work the same as these nodes. The only difference is these target actor components rather than actors themselves. So keep that in mind if you need to set the tick on an actor component, there are nodes for that. And that's it. That's gonna wrap up our tick interval nodes. 
They're useful for changing the interval at which an actor or an actor component ticks. So you can easily make sure things are firing off at different times rather than being frame rate dependent. You might want to do something every X amount of time.